welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat. I have Lori Shemek in the house with me today, and we are going to talk about intermittent fasting and ketogenic dieting. So make sure you stay tuned. I just want to tell you a little bit about Lori first. Dr. Lori Shemek is a leading fat cell researcher and a recognized authority on inflammation and its role in weight loss, preventing disease, and optimizing health. Dr. Shimmick is the best-selling author of How to Fight Fat Formation and the best-selling author of Fire Up Your Fat Burn. She is a leading health and weight loss expert and also known as the Inflammation Terminator. She has made it her mission to help clients lose weight and educate the public on the toxic side effects of certain foods and lifestyle choices and how they create inflammation in the body resulting in weight gain. She is a leading authority on inflammation and its role in weight loss, preventing disease and optimizing health. The Huffington Post has recognized Dr. Shemek twice as one of the top 16 health and fitness experts alongside such names as Dr. Oz and the Huffington Post has also recognized her as one of the top 35 diet and nutrition experts. Dr. Lori Shemek is a regular health contributor to Fox News, a health expert for the ABC TV show, Good Morning Texas. And she has been featured on NBC, The Doctors, CNN, Fox News, Dr. Oz, Best Dr. Oz's <laughs> Best Life Magazine, Prevention Magazine, Health, Shape, Women's Day, Red Book, Ladies Home Journal, and way more than I could even shake a stick at. I am so excited to welcome Dr. Lori to the show. That is so nice of you. Thank you. So nice to be here with you, really. It's nice to be back here with you, actually. Yeah, it's awesome. Off where we started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're starting, we, we were talking about uh, intermittent fasting the last time at the end of the podcast, and now that's going to be our topic. Right, right. So a good one at that. I must say. <laughs> we were talking a little bit about how, just a little off topic, how funny it is when you first get on the internet and you do a Facebook Live uh I know I went sideways one time while cooking, yeah. doing a, like a cooking show. Oh no, while cooking. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so people are like. <laughs> I did. It was my very first uh, interview on my Facebook uh, page. It was live. And I, I'm like putting my finger across the screen because it says scroll to your left to put them to add them to the interview, right? And it was hilarious. People are going, is your screen dirty, Lori? <laughs> you know, it's so funny. And it worked out, but it, it definitely awkward. <laughs> it can be awkward, you guys. So I hope you enjoy our authenticity today because we are real and we are live and we are bringing you significant facts and science on how you can boost your metabolism with intermittent fasting. And so I'm just going to dive into some of what you talked about recently on the doctors. Mm -hmm. What was that like when you were on the doctors and what, what type of things did you leave with the audience? Well, it was wonderful. And um, the audience that was there got a whole uh, lot of information. But unfortunately, when it comes to the general public, to uh, the general TV audience, they edit out quite a bit. So essentially, um, you know, people knew that it, there, there were uh, negatives and there were positives to it. And uh, Dr. Joel Kahn and I were uh, standing for the, the pros of intermittent fasting. And the other two uh, were physicians standing uh, for the negative. Uh, they were against it. And so it was a very interesting debate. And uh, it was actually uh, very exciting. There was a live studio audience and first time I ever de debated on TV, you know, it was definitely interesting. But, um, but yeah, it was good, but definitely edited a lot of it. So the wonders I, of TV. <laughs> I, I can totally appreciate what you're saying with the pros and the cons. Mm -hmm. 
when I was on with Dr. Ann Louise Gettleman one time on, um, I think it was the Mike and Juliet show on Fox, they wanted us to have, they had the, um, I can't remember what her name was, but she comes on and shoots you down basically, you know, and she, I felt like she was attacking Dr. Ann Louise. So I'm like, what's going on? And um, they had your own little cheering section. People were like, you know, every time you say something, they're cheering. Oh, and, <laughs> and so <laughs> I was laughing because it was so bizarre. And, um, and then it felt great, but you're like, this is so weird. Every time I say something, they're like, whoa. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, right? <laughs> yeah. And they wanted me to say something negative. Like, um, like they were trying to get me, you know, the lady that was kind of the negative attack mm -hmm. for the, for the con side. And then she said something and I started to talk. They said they wanted me to react. They wanted it to be reactive, but they had turned off my microphone. <laughs> so, you didn't, you didn't yeah, I look outraged. Like, <laughs> yeah, what you do? <laughs> so it was just funny. I just think it's funny the things that happen to you. But, but anyway, what are the pros? Let's go over the best part. What are the pros of intermittent fasting and what are the benefits? Right. So the pros are what most people use intermittent fasting for, and that's weight loss. Okay. Um, weight loss happens as a, for most people, not everybody. Um, it just depends on how much you're eating really. Uh, and we'll go into that in a little bit, but those who uh, intermittent fast, even if they overdo their caloric intake, um, say three days in a row, for example, if you're intermittent fasting every day, you're still, uh, you're, overall general carbohydrate, uh, sorry, calorie intake is lower. So you're, you know, just the, the in and out of calories is um, not something that I necessarily adhere to, but there is the law of thermodynamics, right? So if you eat a lot of calories, you're going to gain weight and no matter if they're healthy or not. And the same is true as if you don't eat enough calories, uh, you eat 500 calories a day, you're going to lose weight, okay? So that being said, um, the, the intermittent fasting diet is excellent for uh, reducing weight. And not only that, it helps uh, boost cellular health, which is very important. And I do intermittent fasting as well. I um, am doing it right now as we speak. And it's very beneficial. I mean, it's, uh, I did it, chose to do it primarily for uh, cell health okay, for cellular health. And when you do it for that reason, what happens is um, your cells become more efficient, your mitochondria increase in number and they become healthier. So you have these little mitochondria, we all remember back in biology in high school, right? Learning about the little tiny um, organelles that run our cells. They're actually the little, uh, energizer bunnies of our cells. And without them, they, we would not be alive. And so as we age naturally, or if we have poor diets and or um, if we, um, as I mentioned, age, we don't exercise, we're sedentary, we begin to lose our mitochondria. And they also begin to uh, fail. They, they slow down, if you will. And so when you do intermittent fasting or you do the ketogenic diet, it really bumps them up, the number of them and their energy, okay, which translates to a healthier you. And that translates to a leaner you too, because the more mitochondria you have, the less inflammation you have, inflammation, weight gain, um, and poor mitochondrial health all go hand in hand. So really important to... You know, if you think about really what everything boils down to is cell health, cellular health. And another uh, cell benefit that happens when we do intermittent fasting is something called autophagy. And it's a cool name, isn't it? Autophagy. <laughs> but yeah. what it means is that it's essentially allows when you're not eating your cells to clean out, clean house, if you will. There's a lot of housekeeping that goes on. And uh, when we're eating, the cells really don't have much opportunity to do that. And uh, so it, what happens is because eating really is uh, one of the most energy demanding things that we do, 
Um, it takes up a lot of our cells energy. It, we start collecting debris within the cell. We get little fragments and junk in there. And so when we stop eating, it's uh, autophagy means self eating. Okay. The cell then uses some of the junk. It repurposes it. It cleans Ooh, everything. That is really cool. Yeah. And it's really, a, it's really, it's so important to do uh, no matter what your health goals are uh, to whether it's weight loss or fitness or whatever, is to absolutely make sure that you don't eat all the time. I used to be, be the breakfast queen. Okay. I used to be the one who said, you have to eat your breakfast because you know, you don't want your blood sugar to drop so low that you're going to be ravenous. Right. So, um, it, you know, I would, recommend that people eat breakfast, you know, obviously a healthy one. Um, but, you know, now with the mountains of research, the literature that's pouring in about intermittent fasting, the ketogenic diet, it is undeniable right now. And so, yeah, this is a hot topic. I mean, this is being discussed like on the airwaves, like crazy and people are getting amazing results with doing both either intermittent fasting and the ketogenic diet. Can you explain what, what does ketogenic mean, you know, for people that may not understand what that is? Right. So the ketogenic diet is essentially eating a diet that is virtually no carbs. Okay. If you do it properly now, depending on who you are, some people, let me backtrack. So you, the, the typical recommendation is 20, to 100 grams of carbs a day, okay? You look at uh, a cup of pasta is 45 grams of carbs, and who eats even one cup of that, right? So um, it's not much, and you have to calculate your, incorporate your veggies, everything needs to be um, under that 100 gram, okay? Um, but depending on who you are, you could eat 150 grams of carbs a day if you're metabolically flexible and still be in ketosis, all right? So uh, when you're in ketosis, it's your body's ability to um, produce ketones. You're using your fat for fuel. And that's what we want, uh, ideally. And that happens with intermittent fasting too. So preferably for me, I chose to do intermittent fasting, but all the same benefits happen with um, intermittent fasting as on the ketogenic diet, except more powerfully with a ketogenic diet because there is not a bump, a rise in insulin. And so the object of uh, being in ketosis and on the ketogenic diet is to keep insulin as flat as possible. Okay, that's very important to remember because insulin uh, not only is it's a growth factor, which means it stores fat, but it also is a cancer promoter if you have an excess of um, can be an excess of carbohydrates intake. Okay, so they have found that um, by tamping down on the insulin response, that a whole host of benefits occur, longevity occurs, brain health occurs, lowered inflammation occurs. And I remind you that all of these benefits happen with inter intermittent fasting as well. And uh, uh, muscle mass, more muscle mass, which is important for everybody, um, better fitness, as I mentioned. Um, and, you know, people in the uh, Alzheimer's and dementia communities are seeing uh, symptoms mitigated with the ketogenic diet. Diabetes has been reversed or uh, improved. People are getting off their insulin. Uh, there's a, it's, I believe it's Verda that just came out February 14th with a study showing that um, simply by doing this low carb diet, some are low carb, some are in true ketosis, uh, they've been able to get off their insulin or at least cut their insulin dosage in half. Okay. And that's very important. You know? um, so the, the list of benefits, skin health, brain health, focus, energy through the roof, you feel somewhat when you're, um, for example, fasting, intermittent fasting, you feel a little bit euphoric because you're, uh, Oh yeah, that's funny. That is the exact thing that I tell people is that when you, cause when I do it on I have the sweat online challenge. When we do it on there, 
um, you know, people are kind of a little afraid, like I'm going to not be eating for yes. how long, you know, it kind of, you're like, whoa, that's yes. against what they've been taught for years and years. And, but I told them, I'm like, it's like this euphoria, you get this euphoric feeling when you have completely like cleaned out your cells and even a detox, sometimes like a fast will do right. that. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, you do. And you know, and it's, it's, Primarily because you have more adrenaline. Uh, that's because back in the in the Paleolithic times, you know, we didn't have food available 24/7 to us. We would miss a meal. We would miss days of eating, and so um, we needed that energy to go hunt for food. So the adrenaline response occurs, and that's what gives us that that you know wonderful focused energetic feeling that we get. And so, um, yeah, so the ketogenic diet is fantastic. Um, keto, ex exogenous ketones are another uh, way to um, go get into ketosis without having to wait weeks or months to actually. Oh, oh yeah, we were, what is that product you're talking about that could help us again? Yeah. So it's called, my product is Prove It. And it is an exogenous ketone meaning, meaning that you don't have to be on the ketogenic diet to get into ketosis. So it helps stop sugar cravings, hunger, it bumps up uh, your energy, it increases skin health, collagen, it mitigates, as I mentioned, all of the benefits, uh, uh, mitigates the effects of diabetes um, and you know, autism for a lot of people have mentioned one lady just mentioned that her son, for the first time, has been able to get off his autism medicine simply, this was just the other day, uh, by taking the ketones. And it's a powdered drink is what it is. It's um, very easy. But, you know, those are examples. So uh, the ketogenic diet, um, exogenous ketones, or intermittent fasting. Those are three ways to really in, uh, increase your ketone level. You can also do it with exercise. Um, you can, you know, just, um, simply by going for a walk, you can improve your cell health, but, but ideally you want a more therapeutic approach, right? So you do want your diet is 90% of everything that you experience in terms of your health, uh, or lack thereof. So, um, when you, it, when you focus on your diet, it's extremely beneficial to you. And you do it in the right way. What is the history of intermittent fasting? How did it begin and evolve? Well, it's, as I mentioned, back in the day in the, you know, the caveman day, um, we didn't have food available to us. We now are, you know, we're looking at, you know, three meals a day with snacks and, and more snacks in between. And back then, you know, they had to go hunt for their food. They sometimes didn't find it. And sometimes, for example, in terms of sugar, they'd find, you know, a honey patch where they, you know, they'd find honey and they'd gorge on the honey because they knew that though that was few and far between those hives, right? They may find a, a patch of berries and that would, uh, also, they would gorge on those too, but that was it. That was, you know, those were the few times that they would actually, um, you know, get those treats, okay? Now, what is it for us? It's right there for us. It makes it really easy to overdo it. And so, as I mentioned before, the, uh, when we eat, that is the most energy demanding activity that we do. Okay, so have you ever felt um, where you are, you're just tired and lethargic after eating, say after Thanksgiving dinner, right? After a carb heavy meal, for example. Oh yeah, and, it just makes you instantly like sleepy. Right, so that's an example of all the blood going right to your digestive tract uh, away from your brain. And that's why you feel sleepy and you don't feel uh, energetic and focused, right? So. Um, we want to, we want to make sure that we're eating the right foods. We want to make sure that we're not eating a lot. And in order to do that, we have to make the choice of, do I eat all the time and bump up that insulin, right? Or do I make an effort not to eat? So that's my dog ringing the doggy doorbell. 
Oh, <laughs> what's your dog's name? <laughs> oh, cute. What kind of dog is it? She's a golden doodle. Oh, so doodle. cute. We've been looking at those. Yeah. Oh, we, oh, she's wonderful. She's just, these dogs are sweet. They're smart and very friendly, very sociable, really good with kids. Speaking of that, how important is it to give your dog good nutrition? I mean, what type of uh, things should you be feeding your, your dog? That's a good question. That is, you know, uh, you know, it's interesting. A lot of people were feeding their dogs grains for a long, long time. And it turns out that dogs were having food allergies, right? So they're having food allergies to grains. And so now the food manufacturers are, are on board taking the grains out of the dog's diet. And they're really promoting a more natural wild diet. A lot of raw is being involved because that's a dog's natural tendency and it turns a lot of people off but uh raw really is a, a really healthy way for dogs lots yeah, of vitamins. i mean i know that that I, I have to think there was sugar in her dog treats one morning when i i was doing a podcast and mm -hmm. um she was in her little bed and I had given her a dog treat so she could be, you know, a good girl while I'm podcasting. Oh my <laughs> and she like started like going crazy, jumping up and down, like like yeah, a kid. Well, I'm sure. And I think it had sugar in the dog treat. Yeah, I, I took Tessa to her puppy obedience class. And the trainer kept giving her treats, cookies, was packed with sugar. And I finally had to say no more. You know, she kept, you know, she started doing it. And I stopped her after about the third one. I said, please, I don't want my dog to have that, you know, sugar. They're real cookies. Yeah. Um, I, I, was... I don't even eat them. But, you know, she was listening <laughs> with the sugar treats. So. I but, mean, after that experience, I'm like, I can see why you wouldn't want to give it to your kids either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it, yeah, to keep them in line. But yeah, and so that, you know, we probably should talk a little bit about what is a healthy diet. Should there be sugar involved? Right, in right, right. You know, and, um, you know, outside of intermittent fasting and ke ke the ketogenic diet. So yeah, we want to, to um, optimize our health. So our diet is, uh, as I mentioned, 90% of what we experience in terms of uh, the benefits we see, the quality of health that we see, and and of course the uh, the alternative is true. And genetic expression, we are all unique. We're all you, definitely different, but generally across the board, we're the same. Okay, and um, so when I recommend something, I recommend it not because I know for a fact you're gonna you know, do well at this, but generally the, the general population does. So we have, um, we want to make sure that we get a lot of vegetables in our diet, a lot of their uh, uh, berries, blueberries, for example, blackberries, strawberries. We want leafy greens, coffee, chocolate, dark chocolate, 80% or more cacao, cacao is very important. Anything less, you see a lot of chocolate recommendations at 70%, um, that's too much sugar in there, okay? And it's actually causing people to eat more of it than they need. So when you go 80 or higher, you're good to go. It helps stop cravings. And um, so all of those foods, coffee, tea, like green tea, for example, all teas, they're packed with polyphenols. And these are antioxidants that actually stop um, inflammation. They can help reverse cellular inflammation. And that includes a fat cell as well. So there are certain foods like blueberries, a spice called uh, turmeric, that is extremely beneficial in terms of reversing the inflammation within the fat cell, shrinking that fat cell. And I talk more about this in my last book, How to Fight Fat Inflammation. But um, it, very important to make sure that you add anti-inflammatory foods to every meal. If you make it a on a consistent basis, your choice to add anti-inflammatory foods to every meal, grass-fed meats, pasture-raised chicken, you know, um, and the products from these animals, you will, uh, 
your health will change, your weight will change. And then we have sugar. So people say to me, well, can I have sugar? You know, you can, but I really find that when people eat sugar, they want more of it. They become addicted to it. Right. I was addicted to it. So I know what that's all about. And um, so I try to keep people away from that, not even using healthy sweeteners either. I don't want them to really necessarily do that. So um, because the brain is tricky, you know, if, if it believes that, you know, sugar is forthcoming, then you do start to uh, you possibly can trigger the insulin response and you can possibly start uh, craving sugar again. So we have to keep that insulin level down. What is a typical day of intermittent fasting? Because I know there's a lot of listeners out there that may be confused and don't even know how to begin. Can I hold on for one second? Oh, sure, sure, okay. sure. <laughs> Let me check and see if you guys have any questions while we're on here then. All right. She's out. Oh, we have some comments. Let's see. Is Oops. one second. Oh, sure, sure, okay. sure. <laughs> I don't know how to make it be quiet. Let me check and see if you guys have any questions while we're on here. We'll have to then. definitely do some editing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't yeah. get it to turn down. Oh, no. oh my gosh. Well, is hi guys, and um, I'm going to have to shut the light. Let me check and see if you guys have any questions while we're on here. We'll have to definitely do some editing. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, back to the question. How do the listeners out there do a day of intermittent fasting? Just spell that out for them in the easiest way possible to begin. All right. So I recommend that if you are going to do intermittent fasting, that you start reducing your carbohydrate intake before you jump into it. Okay. There's different ways of um, intermittent fasting. And when you take those baby steps to, intermittent fasting, whatever type you choose to do, um, you are beginning to uh, be less reliant on glucose. You're less of a sugar burner, okay? Your ultimate goal is to be a fat burner. And so there are different types of intermittent fasting. There's something called 16-8, which is what I do, which is I simply just don't eat breakfast and my first meal is about 12, okay? And then uh, I have an eight-hour window if I choose to to eat. And you have to, you can eat your snacks, you can eat your meals, and as I mentioned before, uh, you you still eat less calories overall. You're still really eating uh, less calories. And then there's blocks of fasting. People will do one day, 24 hours. They'll do two days, three days. Um, it just depends on what they choose. And there are some people I know. Gandhi went for 21 days. You know, <laughs> he's like, um, but. You know, those are, and people in religions do fasting, uh, different types of, most religions, in fact, have some type of fasting uh, in their culture. So um, don't be afraid of it, all right? So that's the first thing I want to say. You Hunger, you should never be afraid that you're going to be hungry. You can't die from intermittent fasting. You know, skipping one meal is not going to be a problem. You know, people have fasted overnight to have a blood test taken the next day. That's intermittent fasting, okay? So when you fast, if you don't get up and eat during the night, you are fasting, okay? Um, it is, um, I talk again, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> So you, what happens when you get up during the night and eat, you stop that fasting process. You stop the ketone bodies, okay? And um, so when you're um, intermittent fasting, that's what you're doing is you're increasing the ketones and that's the goal. So uh, when you, and a good example would be uh, your first uh, meal of the day, I always say fat first to break the fast. Okay. So mine, let's say is at lunch. Um, I, I would have some avocado or I would have some macadamia nuts to break the fast or a cup of, um, bone broth, right. Which has really healthy collagen in it. Um, if you have any type of digestive issue, fasting is fantastic for you because you're resting your, your digestive system. Um, 
And so what I do is I'll have a huge salad, okay, of dark leafy greens, and I'll add in a tablespoon of MCT oil, which I think we talked about the, on the, your last show, which is medium chain triglycerides, it's short for that. And these also provide ketones, uh, promote ketones. They also, it also boosts metabolism and protects brain health, pr promotes focus. So MCT oil is a great oil to add, very healthy to whatever you want. It has no taste. Okay, so I do that. I add in some chia seeds uh, to that and some onion powder, some garlic powder and uh, anything else. I, I, use, I like to use like dandelion greens, arugula and what spinach is what I had yesterday. So that's that. And then I'll have some form of protein. Like I had a rotisserie chicken. I had a little bit of that and um, some chocolate afterwards. So that was what I had for lunch. And we're going to love you. <laughs> You're saying their favorite word. They're like, wait, Linda, you didn't tell me to have chocolate. <laughs> but it really is. Um, you can have really delicious foods on uh, intermittent fasting. And I do sometimes, most times, a combination of keto foods and, as you can tell, and um you know, a keto meal, for example, and in intermittent fasting. So when you do that, you really tamp down on that insulin response and get all the, the benefits that I mentioned earlier. And what about exercise? If per se, I do a two, three day fast, is it discouraged or encouraged? No, it's actually encouraged because uh, you, and assuming that you have the, your body has the ability and it's used to using fat for fuel. Okay. Because if you're used to burning sugar, your, your body's dependent upon insulin, uh, upon uh, carbohydrates for that glucose, then it's going to be a, a nightmare. All right. So you have to make sure that you're totally a fat burner. And, um, and then what happens is that you, you gain more muscle mass, you become more fit, you, uh, it promotes athletic ability when you uh, exercise on a fast. And if, if you have trouble with it, that means you're not completely yet um, able to do that. Okay. Okay. That makes complete sense. Yeah. And when you say we should have fat directly after a fast, mm -hmm. is that because we're replacing fat stores, you know, energy that we've burned or what is the reasoning behind why we should do the fat? No, it's because you don't want to negate the benefits that you've accrued by not uh, take, by not increasing your insulin. Okay. Okay. Um, so fat doesn't have any effect hardly on our insulin response. And so um, that's why fat's always okay. a good way to ease into the, uh, so I always say fat first because it eases you into eating, right? And so if you were to eat, break a fast with like chips and crackers or even healthy crackers or whatever, you know, it would, it, you don't want to do that. Okay, good. Good to know. I'm sure a lot of people out there probably have broken their fast that way. They're like, oops. But um, yeah, that's good to know that you don't want to run the thing you just did, right? Right. And so a couple of the, the things people may encounter um, would be in terms of not eating. They're, they may, so if you decide that you want to um, do intermittent fasting, if you have a disordered eating and in the past this may not be for you because you're very food focused right you're you're like you may be one of those that's you know okay you know when can i eat again you know very watching the clock and then um and then the other thing uh is that a lot of people if they have issues with food will overeat on their uh, next meal that, you know, their very first meal, I mean, so they become very bloated and feel very uncomfortable. Now, having said that, when you first start it, you will feel a little uncomfortable because you're not used to eating that much food. Um, you need to make sure you get uh, the right uh, micronutrients, minerals in particular, um, throughout your two meals. But um, some people will overdo it and not feel well.
afterwards. And then there's that reliance upon caffeine. Okay, a lot of people love caffeine. It takes away the, the desire to eat. And when you first start out, you're, it, there's really a period of time, a good week or two, sometimes to a month, where you just want to eat. Your body is so used to um, eating at a certain time. Our bodies, everything in our body is based on the circadian rhythm, right? It all flows on a, on a natural circadian rhythm, even our gut bacteria. And so um, every day, if you were used to eating breakfast at eight o'clock, that, when that eight o'clock rolls around, your stomach's going to be growling. Eventually, that all goes away. And depending upon how quick it happens for you, we're all different, so it's hard to say. But um, so that's something. So people will drink coffee to tamp down on the appetite okay but in the process what they're doing is they're also dehydrating themselves with that excess caffeine and so if they're drinking too much coffee there's too much caffeine and most people aren't drinking enough water anyway and I need to add a note here you need to drink a lot of water when you're fasting very important because remember I was talking about the autophagy um, it is very important to get rid of all that debris that's being released from the cell, all the toxins, okay? And uh, so, yeah, it, very important not to overdo it on caffeine. And uh, I think, you know, for the most part, um, most people are okay with intermittent fasting. Uh, women have a harder time with it. We're so finely tuned hormonally that... Um, it can mess with our hormones. Um, it, it may stop the uh, menstrual cycle for some women. If that happens, immediately get off. Uh, you, you really want to be careful with being a woman. So if you're not feeling right when you start it, always listen to your body and make sure that you, you stop doing it and see how you feel afterwards, you know, when you resume your normal diet. Um, and, you know, the, the benefits, however, though, outweigh in a huge way the negatives, okay, of intermittent fasting. And one huge benefit is that you increase uh, human growth hormone. A lot of people have uh, an issue with the fact they think, well, if I'm not eating, I'm, I'm going to be losing muscle mass. Right, and, right. I hear that a lot. Yeah. That's one of the complaints. Right. Or my metabolism is going to slow, you know, right. uh, but that's not true because um, our body is designed to keep us, our muscles, our muscles uh, intact um, when we're fasting, unless we go to a severe calorie deficit. So human growth hormone is what keeps the muscles intact and keeps our metabolism humming. Now, what? You know, you said there's not very many cons and that the pros far outweigh the negatives, but who should not other, you know, is there anyone that should not intermittent fast? And what are some of the negatives, the downside of doing it? Right. So people with diabetes should not do intermittent fasting. Um, ketogenic diet is something different, however. Um, people that are hypoglycemic should not. Pregnant women should not, uh, or nursing mothers should not, because they need that energy to feed the baby and the baby needs to grow. And um, people, um, you know, again, who have had disordered eating in the past, unless, you know, you've, it's not been an issue for a long, long, long time and you're good with food, okay, your relationship to food. Um, but, and as I mentioned, women in general tend to have a more challenging time with intermittent fasting. I'm fine with it. I don't have a problem with it. Um, but for mo most women are okay with it, but there are some women that, you know, it really wrecks their hormones, it wrecks their sleep. Um, so we want to make sure that, you know, we want to keep things we want, you know, it's really a pattern of eating. It's not a diet per se. Um, the ketogenic diet is called a diet, but it really is a way of eating. And so both are very healthy, but we also have to listen to our bodies, no matter what type of eating you're doing, whether you're eating an anti-inflammatory diet or what, you need to listen, pay attention. 
Oh, I love that. Now, I had heard on JJ Virgin's podcast when she was on the last episode that mm-hmm. it could be bad for you if your thyroid is out of whack to do mm-hmm. a ketogenic diet. And her reasoning was because you're not getting enough fuel for the thyroid. What is your take on that? Yeah, I, there, are, there are some people that where their thyroid is affected. However, in my experience, it's people who um, have been on the, they've been doing the ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting for a long, long time. And that's why it's really important to go cycle in and do it. Cycle yeah do it same with intermittent fasting every day can affect your your thyroid um but there are people again we're all unique that not a problem right you can go and and uh it and it doesn't affect you so in general i would say it doesn't affect most people but it's very important you know and and you don't really know if your thyroid's affected or not so the only way you do know is by testing and um, so that's something that I always recommend people get tested anyway for their inflammation level, their homocysteine, their CRP, homocysteine, their thyroid, very important, uh, as well as their vitamin D levels. So what are some of the tests then? Do, do they have specific names? So the, the inflammation test, uh, there are two. There's the CRP, C-reactive protein test very inexpensive, very important information. If all, if you, that, that's one test to take, um, if above them all, because it, if you have inflammation, um, you know, things need to change. So if you're, you know, at a low level of inflammation, that's good information to know. If you're high, that's information that you can use as well to change things. Um, homocysteine is another important, uh, marker to get tested for in terms of inflammation and um you know when you like i said when you have that information a lot of people are afraid to get the information but it is just that it's information for you to use and then you can change you know you can make changes that's really great great information i know a lot of people out there will be writing this down because you know, this isn't always something you hear when you go to your general practitioner and right. (laughs) You have to ask for it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to ask for it. You've got to be informed reading books like Lori's and just listening to podcasts and really, you know, researching for yourself. Like Shalene Johnson says, it's the science of one. So what might work for me might not work for you because we are all different. So you have to experiment a little bit on yourself. And I think doing that in an educated way, if you have these tests, Mm -hmm. you're going to be a little bit more sure about which direction to take. And Mm -hmm. after listening to Lori today, I think we all got some really good info. Uh, I know you have a really cool project coming up with um, the Discovery Channel. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yes. So um, there's a new new docu series that's going to be on called Reversed, and they're taking people with diabetes and they're reversing their diabetes. And it was a hit last year. It's on Discovery and A and E, and I'll be a health expert on the show. And it's going to be another hit show. They have a, a great um, ability to help heal people and educate the audience so important because you know diabetes is rampant type 2 diabetes in our society so um so this is a show i'm very very proud to be a part of for sure it's really great now when will this air again this fall so it okay airs- and, and on start- the discovery channel correct and annie right this is going to be great i can't wait to watch and uh very inspiring for people out there that are looking for help you know, maybe a lot of people will get some new information to turn their health around. Yeah, it's very, you know, very important to just take small baby steps. Like I said about the intermittent fasting, you know, get, take small steps, start reducing your carbohydrate intake slowly and get used to not relying your body, not relying so much on glucose for fuel. And then you can take the step into intermittent fasting. And, you know, maybe go when you wake up in the morning, instead of eating breakfast at eight, eat it at 10 a.m. 
and then push it back and see how you can, how far you go. And that's the, that's the best way to do it, the most successful. I'm really curious is how, and you, you have what your doctorate in psychology, mm -hmm. how did you end up in the health, you know, the health field? <laughs> that's a great question. Um, so I used to uh, uh, do family counseling for, especially for families at risk, right? And they were typically families that were struggling financially or, you know, they just didn't have the direction they needed to have. And so I, my health has always been really a priority for me. It's been, you know, even as a child, my mother would just shake her head, you know, watch, you know, I'd be nine years old reading a health something or other. And, um, but anyway, I would write out, you know, their grocery list, what kinds of foods I should buy. And I would um, tell them what kinds of foods they should be eating. And lo and behold, their health changed. Uh, their children's health changed. They became more manageable. They became, um, the parents became more motivated. And they went out and they found jobs. They went back to school. And, you know, it's amazing what food does to our mental well-being. It is truly amazing. It's, it's an epigenetic factor that um meaning that the environment what you eat thoughts you think um who you surround yourself with all of that uh conspires to affect your genetic expression it doesn't change your basic gene but it it changes the effect okay so um i became vice president and then i decided you know i think i'm gonna go back to school <laughs> like i really wanted to do that and get my degree in nutrition, became a nutritionist and uh, started. And then I also went and got my degree in health coach. I mean, life coaching and became a health coach. And so that's how I started. I, started. I love that story. I'm glad I asked. That is a great story. Mm -hmm. I just want to acknowledge you for showing us all that with better health, we can become better with age. And you are just one of the sweetest people that I have met in this business. So I truly, truly enjoy my time with you. And I thank you so much for being a voice to help others to better their health. And I just really appreciate everything that you do. You're so sweet. Thank you. That means a lot to me, really. So and the feeling is truly mutual. Sister. <laughs> <laughs> Sisterhood. <laughs> What, where can everybody reach you on social media and where can they find your books? That you can find me on Twitter, Lori Shemek. You can find me on my Facebook page, Dr. Lori Shemek. In both places, every day I post something uh, that will help uh, promote your, create a quality, healthy life, okay? And you can find my book anywhere books are sold on Amazon, for example. My book, How to Fight Fat Inflammation, will help reverse inflammate, cellular inflammation and fat cell inflammation, helping you to lose weight and create optimal health. And um, I, my other book, uh, Fire Up Your Fat Burn, you can find on my website or Amazon as well. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to The Sisterhood of Sweat. Make sure to give us a review in iTunes and let Lori know how much you enjoyed this and benefited from this podcast. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. And we'll check you out later. Mm -hmm.